One more time for the greatest team in America. Dale uh, Lick uh, formed a committee um, of local people. And he said, I want you to meet, I want you to look into football and tell me that if football could be successful at Georgia Southern. It was community people, it was uh, professors, it was instructors, it was administrative people on campus. And the committee actually came back to him and said, Dr. Lick, we, we have our findings. And he said, I would like to hear that in your good report. The committee said, we don't think football can be successful here. We don't recommend it. Well, strange, I'll admit to this as an alumnus or an alumna, I got the survey in the mail about should we start football at Georgia Southern and I just laughed out loud and threw it in the trash. I said, are they crazy? You know, that, that, that is, I'll confess, I have confessed to that over the years. Uh, a vote was done here on campus, the vote was lost. Uh, good news, Dr. Lick could uh, care less about the faculty vote that we had. We started football. Dale looked at him and said, thank you for your service and your time. You will always be dear friends but we will have football at Georgia Southern. Dr. Lick went down to my AD, then George Cook, and said, Mr. Cook, we're gonna start football. Will you help me? George said, we're not starting football. Dr. Lick looked at Coach Cook and said, you're now the golf coach. We're gonna start hiring an AD who will start football. And shortly after that, we hired Bucky. And football is now here at Georgia Southern. It's, a, it's a, an undertaking that uh, once you start, there's no return. I told the president when he made his decision to start the program that uh, this picture yourself that you're skiing and you're on the top of a black diamond slope and you push off. Now, there's no way in hell you're gonna be able to stop on that ride down and walk back up to the top. But, uh, this is a competitive situation and you either win or you're nobody. When uh, I went out to look for a football coach, I, I needed someone that had name recognition because we had nobody here that identified with football. So when you go out to raise money, you got to have a football guy. Dr. Lick was in my store at the surf shop in Dublin. We were in the mall at the time. During that conversation, he looked at me and he said, uh, Mike, what do you uh, know about Irk Russell? And I said, well, I said, I, I just know he's a tremendous coach. I said, I've known several people that have played for him and they just were very passionate about being able to play for Irk and they'd run through a wall. Whatever he asked them to do, they were willing to do and just had a great player-coach relationship. He said, what do you think about us getting him at Georgia Southern? And I said, are you serious? I mean, you think we can get him? He said, we're going to try. I'll never forget it because we were riding and it was just he and I in the car and he said, now Frank, now you went to Georgia and you knew Coach Russell and I said, yeah, and he said, do you think that we could get Irk Russell to come here? And I was, I just, I had to, I had to laugh. I said, Irk Russell is not coming to Georgia Southern. In fact, I believe you could get Vince Dooley here before you could get Irk Russell. Who knew? I'll remember the day that Bucky called me, Bucky Wagner, and I was at my sporting goods store and I answered the phone. It was in the spring of 81. And he said, hey Frank, he said, um, I want you to come Sunday morning at 7.30 at the Williams Center, we're gonna have a breakfast. And I want you to come and meet Ert Russell, who's gonna be our next football coach at Georgia Southern. And I laughed. And I said, Bucky, I know this has got to be a joke. Ert Russell is not coming to Georgia Southern, is he? He said, you come Sunday morning, 7.30. And there was a group of men in the community that were invited, of course. And all of a sudden, those doors swung open. There were some double doors. And in walked the bald eagle, Ert Russell. The more I thought about it, the more appealing the idea became of going somewhere with no tradition to speak of, starting up your own program with new and different challenges every day. Late one night on a Friday night, uh, Rick Mandy calls me. I'm uh, 
we didn't have cell phones back then, so he tried smoke signals, that didn't work. So he called me on the house phone to ask me to get up and go paint a stage uh, so we could introduce our new football coach Saturday morning for Georgia Southern. And I knew that it went to Athens, so I knew somewhere or another, he wouldn't say who it was, but you had a pretty good feeling it was gonna be off of Georgia staff. So I went out to uh, Hanner, got uh, some old wood staging that we had stored there, took some plywood, made a backdrop, painted it uh, solid blue and painted the eagle that we were using back in the 70s, painted it on the backdrop, and uh, the paint was still wet when we handed Urca football, which to this date, I swear we went over to Kmart to buy it, Bucky has his story, Frank Hook's got his story, but hey, you had to make shift and make something do what you had to do, and we did. I started then and I took the picture, I always say when I'm introducing myself, I took the picture of Coach Russell with the ball up. And so that keeps me in the club, I think. You know, it gets me in the club from the beginning. Shortly after that, we finished the press conference, Urch does all his questions and answers, and uh, we're walking up the stairs and... I asked Urch, Coach Russell, why can't I call you? And he said, just call me Irk. People admired him so for the career choice that he made because he could have gone to any other D1 school at the time after, um, you know, from Georgia. And the fact that he chose Georgia Southern automatically made him iconic. He was just a godsend to Georgia Southern. It was just, it was God's timing, Dale Lick's vision, Bucky Wagner's leadership, and the, the ability to hire Coach Russell. Coach Russell came here because I think that he saw that he wanted to end his football legend and his football years by starting something from scratch that he built and to tag it, it's his own program, but never an ego whatsoever.